So um, I wasn't sure who the audience would be. It seems that most of you are from, our, from the gravity program and have heard about and even have strong opinions about the subject. But in, in 10, minutes, 10 minutes I was given, I will only be, be very general to, to set forth a framework maybe for further discussion. Uh, so, so I'll draw a, a black hole, a collapsing star, a horizon forming, the singularity, I guess that's some sort of Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, and the three actors, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, in the Stanford conventions. Um, and um, the Hawking calculation, uh, yeah, the Hawking calculation has the modes A and B in a pure state. Um, because one has locally adiabatic vacuum, they separate due to the geometry, due to the horizon, and eventually B becomes a real particle with a thermal density matrix. But um, Hawking um, uh, row B is thermal, more or less, uh, where, but, but A, B combined is pure. Um, now, because A, B are in a pure state, B can't be entangled with the previous Hawking radiation C. And so this implies that the entanglement entropy of the Hawking radiation um, is monotonically increasing um, until the end of the life of the black hole when one is left either with just the radiation in a mixed state, which is information loss, or, or um, the evaporation terminates with a remnant, and so one has a remnant with large numbers of internal states, a small remnant with large numbers of internal states. And those are, those are two of the classic alternatives, and um, even after the paradoxes we'll talk about, there has, they're, they're unappealing and there hasn't been much uh, much attempt to revisit them. Now, a second possibility, there are going to be four possibilities. Uh, the second possibility is that B, in effect, changes it. To, well, that what comes out here is not the same as what left the horizon. That is, either additional quanta are emitted by some additional mechanism, or B essentially interacts with the black hole in such a way that it changes its identity as it moves outward. So the second possibility, um, I'll give it its short name due to Steve Giddings, NVNL uh, uh, Giddings. So I think this is what, what AMPS called violation of postulate two. Um, the third possibility is, is fiery or brainy or stringy drama, uh, where um, if, in fact, you don't want to lose information and therefore B is entangled with C, B is not entangled with A, that leads immediately to a non-vacuum state near the horizon fire. But that's an argument by contradiction. Something else could go wrong first. You could have, you could run into uh, a wall, some kind of wall of fuzz of brains uh, as, as Mathur has discussed, uh, or uh, perhaps something as, as Eva and Matt uh, and others have been exploring, um, encounter uh, non-local physics uh, due to string. So I'm going to lump all of those together. Well, sorry, sorry. The, the, so I don't think the fuzz people would say if you hit it. Is that right? Do they still... Well, Oh, those, okay, they, they, they actually, uh, I'm going to, good, so this is, um, I, so, so, so I don't know, where, I, 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 good, so maybe a, one of the issues in the subject, of course, is that this is the obvious interpretation of the fuzz wall, yet not the one that Mathur wanted to give, um, and, and, and I still don't know where in this list to put Mathur's own interpretation of his work, um, I don't think he would, I'm not sure he put it into any of these categories. He, well, yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah. So, and, and um, the fourth, which is the one I want to spend my second five minutes on, because it's the one that has really generated uh, the most, the most, the largest set of new ideas, is quantum drama. <laughs> so, 
something, in each case, something non-standard happening at the black hole. So explain what I mean by quantum drama. Let me give an example that doesn't involve black holes at first, but it exhibits the kind of thing I'm talking about. Suppose I give you a, a, a large collection of spins, 100, 100 spinning half particles that I've prepared in some way. And I tell you that I've prepared them in such a way that if you take any one of them and measure the z component of its spin, you'll get a half. But if instead you choose to measure the x component of its spin, you'll also get plus a half. Now, you know that you can't prepare a spin half particle that way. And if I gave you 100 spin half particles and you randomly measured 50 along one axis, 50 on the other, and found that I told you, I think you would regard that as pretty freaky. <laughs> so this, in fact, this, so this, is, this, this, is, now this, is, this is an example of what I'm calling quantum drama. It doesn't seem as dramatic as burning up, but really it's much more dramatic Do than burning up. Do you mean quantum drama? Pardon? <laughs> This is, well, no, this is quantum drama because it's, it's something which quantum mechanics doesn't allow. Right, right, so it's. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, now um, so, so now, in fact, however, there is a modification of quantum mechanics which allows that, which is the final state proposal where you have. <laughs> why, is this, why, why is this funny? <laughs> He wasn't even 60 when he proposed it. <laughs> 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 Namely, your observations, the ellipsis can be conditioned both on the state that you prepare, which might be the x state, or, or the state that you, this, the, some, some pre-imposed final state. And, and in this case, you will in fact find exactly the kind of drama that I described. Now, now and, and, and so Preskill and Lloyd proposed that, um, in fact, the way to get rid of the firewall is to um, use Gary and Juan's proposal, impose a final state condition here at the singularity, and then, in fact, you have the analogous kind of drama where it's not spin a half in the two axes, but it's that you, have, that you, you can verify both the BC entanglement and the AB entanglement if you do it in the right order. And there's, I, again, in 10 minutes, I can't talk about the pluses and minuses of this. Uh, Douglas and others have worked on it. Uh, but I wanted to mention this as an example of quantum drama. Now, there are various proposals that fall under quantum drama. And it's not even clear how many different ones there are. Uh, Lenny has claimed that ER equals EPR is an example of quantum drama. Uh, uh, sorry, an example of the final state hypothesis question. So how would you define quantum drama? What, quantum drama is, is quantum drama means, that, okay, good. So actually, good. So I should have, uh, there's something I left out. Um, so so in, the classic, in the classic complementarity uh, experiments, you, had, you did have both entanglements, but no single observer can see both. Quantum drama means that somehow the observer experiences one way or another. Well, quantum drama means that, that, the, that, the, that the, the theory of the infalling observer, the theory of the observations of the infalling observer does not fall in the framework of normal quantum mechanics. And final state would be an example of that. So, so Lenny claims that, that ER equals EPR actually, if you think about bending around the tensor network, is uh, equivalent to final state. I gather Juan will be here next week. I don't know if, he, if the plan was for him to talk about ER equals EPR, but I'm not going to say anything more about ER equals EPR. So, so when you say that uh, in the violations of quantum mechanics, are you talking about violations that would be detectable by, uh, by an observer? Or? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I'm going, so, so yes, so violations. Is well, well, so it, that is, right, that is the observer can measure A, B, and C, and in effect, in fact, actually, in this case, you can measure first X and then Z. You don't even have to choose. You can measure x, find that it's a half, and then measure z and find that it's a half. Is there a particular thought experiment that they Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you jump in. You jump in. And a theory has to predict the observations I see. If the theory says that the, my observations are described by a pure state of AB and a pure state of BC, that's quantum drama. Let me, let me actually, my last comment is about, let me, let me actually, let me, I'm going to bother you much more now, so, so save, your, <laughs> save your comments. So, so this is one example of quantum drama. 
And I want, and, and I want my last point is a second example of quantum drama. Um, so, so um, the the um, so the the infalling vacuum, the A B vacuum. I'll write a cartoon of it as a just say a fermion, so it states are zero and one, just an entangled state of, of of the two Hawking particles. And now, if we look at the black hole from the outside, in a typical state, just general principles of thermal systems, eigenstate thermalization, tell us that a typical state looks like, in a typical state, the mode that we can see, the mode that we can that's coming out, is thermal. And so, and so, um, this looks great. This looks great. We identify this state with that state, and that state with that state, and everything is fine. We have infalling vacuum. The problem is, and the way I like to think about it is, what about this state? Now, you can think about this two ways. You can think, OK, I've done something to the bit that I can see, B, as such that this is no longer, no longer um, the vacuum. So this is an excited state. And so if I prepare the black hole in this state and then, and then act on it so that it becomes an <coughs> that it's in this state, an infalling observer will see a quantum. However, naively, and I'll correct this shortly, this, what if I just give you this state? This state has ex the exact same kind of, suppose I didn't tell you how I prepared it, I just give you this state. This state has exactly the right kind of entanglement, exactly the right density matrix for the particle we can see on the outside to interpret it as itself a ground state. And so, and so the problem is that there are multiple interpretations to this state. Now there's two things I want to say about this. The first is that what I've just given you is a is a cartoon version of what Kyriakos and Suvrat have said and, and others. Um, and they do provide a way to disambiguate the two interpretations of this state, which um, I think is problematic, which, which okay, I'll give my opinion, I think is problematic on, on several counts. One is that it works only for black holes held in equilibrium. It's very hard to even imagine how it would extend to actual decaying black holes. And secondly, secondly, although you can disambiguate the states, it's not as much as you would like. You can have two states which, as state vectors, are nearly parallel, and yet one of them has the interpretation of infalling vacuum, and one of them has the in in interpretation of infalling excited state. So this is something, of course, which, again, is quantum drama. It's your, your theory of the observations of the infalling observer uh, don't, don't satisfy the Born rule, and maybe that's the way quantum gravity is, which would be really interesting, but, but there's a... I noticed on the wheel uh, that Juan talked about third quantization last week. That might be the right framework for making sense of this. Um, anyway, anyway um, you, have, you have a lot of work to do, and there are real... There, there, I, 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 I'm skeptical of this, this working. But the last thing I want to say is, these comments here seem to be very much in keeping with this general theme that space-time comes from entanglement. That is, that both of, in both of these states, you have the right entanglement for there to be a smooth horizon. But, but um, the, in a lot of the discussion of entanglement, the, including ER equals EPR, the focus is on the quantity of entanglement and not the specific nature of entanglement. In, nor in normal quantum systems, two states that have the same amount of entanglement, you know, this could be some, you know, ortho and para um, hydrogen or whatever. You know, the, it not, it's not just the quantity of entanglement, but the, 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 the detailed nature of the entangled state that's important for the physics. Yet in, in ER equals EPR, and, and it seems to me just from the outside, in, in a lot of this idea that, that space-time emerges from entanglement, the amount of entanglement is, is, is what's important and not, not the actual details of the entanglement. So, so I will stop there. And okay. So.
Discussion, comments, questions? So, Joe, if there's one proposal that you haven't talked about, and, and, and I sort of think it goes between MVNL and fiery, grainy, streaky drama in the sense that it's, it's, it's not really drama, but it does. This is the proposal that Willie Fishler and I made, in which there are the, the quantum field theory picture just doesn't capture all of the low energy degrees of freedom. And there are, there are a lot of states that are not captured in quantum field theory and decoupled not by the usual Wilsonian mechanism of, oh, there's some high energy stuff we've integrated out, which in order to excite, you have to have drama. But they decouple by a rather different mechanism, which would take a long time for me to explain here. But it is a, it is a proposal. But, okay, but the, 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 the floating point observer is carrying a detector. The, that detector can't measure the things you just talked about. It can only measure the mode, you know, the number, it can count photons. It can count things like A, B, and C. And so you still need a theory of the observations of A, B, and C. But, yeah, I don't understand what the problem is with that. I mean, the quantum field theory picture of the Hilbert space in our formalism yeah. is just not the correct one. Okay, there so, is no such thing as a vacuum state. But 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 I, you I, you carry a detector, and the, you have you have you have to be able to, at the end of the day to tell me whether it clicks or not. Under under given conditions, yes. suppose in the AMPS experiment we perform the quantum computation on the and going on the initial radiation, and then jump in. What do we see? You, sorry, you perform. The, yeah, you jump in. You see nothing. Okay, uh, you see nothing. So you, you see nothing for a while. Well, okay, okay. No, but by nothing you mean you mean that you mean as you cross the horizon, the fields that you can measure are in their vacuum. But there is no such thing as a field. Wait, wait. I have a I have a detector that counts photons. Okay, sure. I have a detector that counts photons. Does it click or not as I cross the horizon? It's not click. It's not. Now suppose that suppose that we prepare an, a, the black hole in an eigen mode of the number operator of b. Which there I can is do. no such thing. Yes, there is. No, there yes, is. There is. There is. <laughs> <laughs> because in ADS, CF, in ADS CFT, in ADS CFT, B is an identifiable operator, and I compare the system in the eigen state of it. A, B is is not an identifiable operator if you you're claiming that B is something that has finite energy and is restricted to live in a finite region of space time. In ADS CFT, you don't understand how to talk about finite area causal diamonds. So, so, so let me ask you something. Suppose I have ADS CFT, and I act with a local operator here, which, by which, according to the classic dictionary, is a particle coming in. Okay. Then, then if you jump in, you would predict that a detector would click as it passes the particle. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm just using the same thing here. Actually, I'm using a time reverse because B is coming out instead of going. I'm just using the same thing here. I'm just using stuff that I think you believe about ES CFT. That I can prepare the, the CFT in an eigenstate. It's, it's just exactly this, an eigenstate of a, of a, of a bulk field operator, which, which will then make my detector click as I pass it. Well, you can prepare it in an can, eigenstate of that it. particle arriving at the boundary, yeah. but it's not clear that the bulk dual of that state is a regular black hole. Ah, good, good. So it's not for the ADS-CFT is right. No, that's all. No, well, no, no, because, <laughs> ah, ah, but, but you see, if ADS-CFT is right, then I can follow the black hole to the side. It arrives at the right time. So unless it did magic in between, it did in, I mean, if ADS-CFT is right, meaning that the correlators, um, that, that the correlators are correctly given by the, the, the gauge theory, then, then, then no, I actually, there's no assumption. I mean, no, I can no. check. What, what Ted is saying is that yes. in typical states, the, yes. the typical states, yes. that mode B is not in a, a number <clears throat> eigenstate, perhaps. Well, no, but so I, can, I, can, other I can prepare it. No, I said, if I prepare it in a number eigenstate. So this, yeah. so if I prepare it in a number eigenstate, yeah. if I prepare it in a number out, out near the boundary where I don't see the black hole, if I meet it there, does my detector click? Yes. If I meet it there, does my detector click? Yes. If I meet it there, does my detector click? If at some point before the horizon you're going to say no, 
then that's the category. No, I say at some point yeah, in the horizon no, I, you'll, I, get, you'll I, hit a firewall. The Before the horizon, you'll hit a firewall. Well, at the horizon. Okay. Because oh. you took a state that wasn't dual to oh. a smooth black hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. But, but I, mean, I want Tom to answer that. Because Tom, Tom, it's Tom. So, but Tom, what's your answer? So the, the, in, that, in that situation, um, you're asking you're asking about a whole different, a whole bunch of different experiments with yeah, different yeah, yeah. observers. Okay, right? and then, yes, okay. and I, I, what did your theory predict for these? Um, the theory predicts that they will click. Um, here and here and here. Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Okay, so they will click, but you told me it wouldn't click before. You told me if the AMPS experiment was done, the detector would not click. They clicked at a different time. I'm not sure what you're. No, what you're no, no. They click. They click as you go. So the question is, if it, uh, there's one, I'm pulling it back earlier and earlier in time. And and effective field theory would say if it clicks here, it would click. I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking. Does it? You know, if it, if it clicks here, well, if, if if it clicks here, you, you've contradicted yourself because this is this this is this, this preparation is the answer there. Right, but the detector, the detector doesn't, you know, there aren't any, again, in our model, there aren't any global coordinate systems. Uh, I'm not using any global coordinate systems. I, I think you are. No. Okay. Is any coordinate system? You're, you're using a, a picture of, ta of quantum mechanics yes. in which you have a single quantum mechanical system spread out over all of space time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not the way our models work. Okay, in our models, uh, I, I asked, but no, no, I, 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 I well, you're, you're changing, you, I'm, you're changing the subject because I asked you a question, you gave me one answer, I then led you through a series of steps that led you to a different answer. So, I, I'm really suspicious of the time coordinate that you're using for that. I mean, the, the, it's, it's very clear in our models yes. that. Um, the, the particle will be detected, okay, but it's also clear that there will be a period of time for which the particle, the the infalling particle, will not encounter any drama. Wait, wait, what do you mean by period of time? A period of time after what you call it crosses the horizon. But 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 so, but you, but, so but from you, the point of view yeah. of the point of view of a, of a Schwarzschild a supported yes, yes. observer, yes. the particle never crosses the horizon, mm -hmm. and what in fact happens on the horizon is you see some dimple on the horizon as it falls in, and you that, 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 that dimple, dimple, just, observer, just yeah? hold on, yeah. hold on, that that dimple take some time to equilibrate with the rest of the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's something that we understand in terms of quasi-normal loads. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that if you have a quantum mechanical model which describes that process, what it has to describe is some component of the system that you're going to associate with the region near the black hole mm -hmm in which there's some set of degrees of freedom which do not interact with the rest for a period of time of order the Schwarzschild radius and then logarithmically long in order to completely interact with the rest. That, that aspect of the model is enough to tell you that there are some degrees of freedom that on the one hand you will associate with the horizon area of the black hole which don't interact with the rest of the black hole for a long time. That's all you need. That's all you need in order for the particle physics experiments done by that infalling laboratory to look qualitatively like they looked without the black hole there for that period of time. But I think your theory needs to give an answer to the different thought experiments from the end. Maybe we, maybe we should move on. Well, yeah, I, I think we should at least allow others to jump in. And this sounds like this is something that yeah. needs to be uh, worked out. Uh, but uh, Kiriakis. Can, can I ask uh, more questions? One is about this, this uh, 
paradox with the vacuum and the excited state. Yes. So I think this is a, um, a problem if, uh, um, I mean, I could declare the excited state to be a vacuum state. Right? Uh, but, wait, no, no, wait, yeah. wait, 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 that you don't. No, no, the right. excited state is one that, no, you have already, this is, this is a state that you have declared to be an excited state already. When did I do that? In your paper. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I am saying that, that there are states which you would declare to be excited states, no, 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 which are nearly no, no. parallel to states which you would declare to be vacuum states. Yes. So um, the, the second state that you wrote would be an excited state if we keep the operator with the interior fixed, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we are, um, I mean, we, um, in our paper we propose that the operator is an interior state band. Right. I understand. Right. That's what, state dependent means nonlinear. The reason that you have the reason that you have non-orthogonal right, so vectors think, with orthogonal interpretations is because your operators are non-linear. Right. So the I same think, non. Yes. Yeah. So I think uh, the, the state that you call excited would. Um, I mean, uh, this would be a problem if uh, there was an experiment that a lawyer's observer yes. perform in the bank right. in a finite amount of time with right. using simple operators that would take the state. Vacuum to state excited. No, no, we, we, can prepare, the is we can prepare superpositions of these two states and entanglements of these two states with other spins. And I think your theory you doesn't make the predictions. You have issue no, no, you have not. You have specifically not addressed this issue. Um, you, is I, it, I, you, I don't, if you have you ever, where, I looked at your paper yeah. several times now. Yeah. You, you, talk, you talk specifically about vacuum states that are, that are non orthogonal to excited states and superpositions of those. Right. And then, okay, where, which, where? So, with that, you talk about this vacuums, unexcited states, which are not orthogonal to excited states, and what, the, and, and what you would see if the black hole is prepared in a superposition of these. Yeah, but the, the question is, is it possible to go from one state to the other by low but, but where in your paper is this discussed? Section nine. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything but this is discussed. I could be wrong. I mean, not, okay, I think this is can another can one that we're going to have to fight out in the hallway. <laughs> one more question. Apart from this uh, problem, another uh, criticism of our work was about state dependence as a matter of principle. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, this, I think this question has to do with uh, correct identification of equilibrium states. Suppose that this problem has, uh, is resolved. Would you have an objection to the uh, using state dependent operators as a matter of principle in quantum mechanics? Okay. Or do you think that it leads to any concrete paradox? Oh, yes, I think that if you're using, if you're if you're changing the Born rule, you need to specify. No, you say, if you're changing the Born, this is this is a change in the Born rule. No, it, 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 orthogonal non-orthogonal states with orthogonal interpretations is is a change in the Born. If you're changing the Born rule, you have to answer a lot more questions than you answered. Um, I think that we do not claim that the nearby states have uh, completely different physical interpretations. No, you do. You, you do. Um, okay, this is something we should talk about offline. <laughs> or you, 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 maybe you don't claim it, but you, but you, in fact, it's a result of your paper. I, I do not agree with the statement. If this were not true, you wouldn't need state dependence. If it were true, yeah. if it were true that physically orthogonal states were also mathematically orthogonal, you could do everything with state-independent operators. This is, in, I mean, that's that's the basic point. I mean, if, 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 if you could simply work in the orthogonal subspace of, of vacuum states, it's the fact that the vacuum states do not comprise an orthogonal subspace that makes this happen. I have a question for Joe. So what, what would you put your money on? I mean, say you find out that, that our solar system is about to fall into an old black hole. That's extremely large. You know, would you spend all your money tomorrow? Or, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, I've said since for three years that my head believes in the firewall because of, that's where logic points, but my gut doesn't. However, the lack of what I perceive as promising alternatives to the firewall, I, I'm more inclined to try very hard not to follow. <laughs> that's not an answer. No, it is an answer. It is an answer. Uh, there's no theory yet of them yet, you know. But uh... so, so you mentioned that I, I agree with your, what you said that you know all discussion of entanglement and geometry focus on the amount of entanglement. Mm -hmm. but we need some insight into what the structure of entanglement that makes up geometry is. Yes. 
you want to amplify on the statement? You want you have some clues on what? what no, I. Um, no, I know. Now, I, I should mention that, that um, I mean, the, the reason we're by Harlow and collaborators is one thing. They emphasize that, I mean, they're working, it, it's, it's in this big class of the tech six, but it, 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 it in fact is within the framework of linear quantum mechanics. That's not a unique example. It's an example. It's, 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 it's an example of, um, of, 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 of um, what's possible. So, yeah. Anything else uh, burning? <laughs> Maybe we should uh, go ahead with uh, Yixing, and then uh, hopefully we'll have time for more general discussion. But we'll see how things go. I will, I will try. Okay. And it's an honor to speak after you. <laughs> Okay, so I'll start by erasing something that inspired a lot of uh, heated discussion in the, on the blackboard. So, because I don't need them, but I will need some of them. I will keep those. I'll erase almost everything that people have been arguing about. That is one clue of how simple I can, well, I try to stir the discussion to a different direction, which is hopefully uh, simpler, less controversial, maybe. Okay. So, so I'll start from here. Right. So there is a very good reason why the end paper inspired a lot of discussion is because not only they took the, the existing viral paradox, sorry, existing information paradox, they showed that this requirement, AB to be pure, and then BC to be pure, are two things that maybe a single guy can observe. And for me, that's the essential point, which I will try to ask people to think again today, is I want to claim that not if I am very picky. <coughs> and I'll explain what, what, what do I mean by very picky. Okay. But in fact, they, the thing they use in their argument that these two entanglements or purity they can check doesn't really fit into one causal patch. We apply a very high standard to that. Okay? And then I will give you a rough picture about, well, so what? What lesson do we learn? If apply such a very high and very picky standard. What I will not have time to talk about in detail is, well, why do I have to be so picky? Okay? And those are some things I need to sweep under the rug. That is a discussion of insulation, back reaction, which I don't think I'll have time to cover in this session. But I will shamelessly write a, a few archive number. So if you're interested, you can ask me, or I can talk, explain these. The first one is done with Lem Hui, an astrophysicist. Every time I say that in a conference, people ask me, an actual physicist? <laughs> and another done by uh, me and a student in the University of Amsterdam. Okay. Right? So I'll start by this. This is the most important thing. What do I mean by if I'm very, very picky? So let's forget about black hole for a while. Assuming you have a black box of something, something generating particles. Okay? And it sends out electron, one electron at some time, and then later it sends out another electron. And you have reason to believe that, you strongly suspect that these two electrons are entangled, even like bare pairs. Okay. There is a kosher way <laughs> to check that, okay? which is, well, you wait until this electron is here, you send two guys, perform two experiments simultaneously. Simultaneous means that the duration of the entire experiment is space-wide separated. And then they both take note, and they come together and compare the note. This is the exact kosher way to confirm such entanglement, anything you want to say about their state. And why is that kosher? It becomes obvious when you compare with a non-kosher process. 
is that you have the same black, black box. When the first electron comes out, you are so excited. It's run away. Run away. <laughs> 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 ah, this is my electron state. <laughs> and then, well, the other one come out. You do that again and say, well, there's some correlation. You can see why this is slightly not as perfect as that one. It's because whatever you do here potentially affect that experiment, this electron, or even, more seriously, this black box that you have no idea what it's doing, but in the cultural future of something you did. Okay? So, of course, in reality, when we perform experiments on Earth, the light goes around the Earth in less than one second. <laughs> so it's impossible to say everything had been done this way. But if you're doing a Gedanken experiment, if you can arrange that, you should try your best. Because if you do that, nobody can complain anymore. Causal theory, nothing can propagate. Therefore, whatever you confirm here must be coming from the true entanglement. So the first thing I want to show here is to show that the M setup, at least in the, in the plan valida version in, in empty uh, in Minkowski space, scratch your space time, you cannot, in principle, do this. It has to be something like that. Doesn't mean it's wrong, because when you do this, you can argue that you have a very good isolation, that what is doing doesn't affect other things. But that <coughs> will put me here, which I won't talk about in detail today. I want to show you the first step. So I think I can use that diagram, but... If this complaint is only in Minkowski and not in ADS? Uh, I will talk a little bit about ADS. It is still the same complaint in the large enough ADS, large enough to allow the black hole to evaporate normally. Okay, but it will become clear later when I, when, I, when I say that. Okay, so I'm going to draw this diagram, but in the, in the usual Penrose diagram. A, B, and C. OK, so now there are two things I need to try to perform the culture way. Right? And these two are simple. I just send one guy to Hoover outside the horizon. His friend jumps in. They both major, take note. As long as the, the B guy jumps in in about a time scale of uh, M, which is the mass of a black hole, then they can still communicate perfectly. If you do that, too late, there will be a large redshift, a large redshift boost between them to become difficult. So do that within one M, everything is fine. You can confirm that. The difficult part lies in that thing outside. Because presumably, the black hole has been evaporating for a very long time. M cube. Okay? And ideally, I don't want you to touch any of the information carrying thing in C before you measure that B. That's the center of this very kosher way. Anything you do to that guy should happen after this. So what you see is that for the very first Hawking photon, which at this moment will be n cubed away, and that's the time you are allowed to start to do anything to it, get the information. And then you need to try to run very, very fast, come back to the black hole and jump in no later than that n times go. So someone who is assigned to that particular duty has a very tough job. He's assigned his throwaway to so far away from the black hole, M cube, this in the way, and need to come back in within this time. And there is an easy way to quantify how difficult that is. So that guy will be moving toward a black hole, right? Hawking radiation has wavelengths about M in the rest frame of the black hole. You want to have wavelength that in the frame of that guy. It will be strongly boosted, blue shifted. And if you calculate the boost according to these two geometric number, well, this, this time is m cubed, so this time is also m cubed. If you calculate that, you see this is order one, many, namely Planck scale. Okay. It's a simple geometric calculation. There is potentially a large boost, not only between two different things near the, near the horizon, but also potentially between B and C, because C is someone who needs to start his work very far away and then come very fast to the water black hole. So this is my first objection, is this. right? If you try to do that very kosher, the B and C process is not, strictly speaking, within the low energy framework of your physics. So, you're, well, so C needs to travel in a nearly null fashion, I guess is what you're saying. 
But then you're saying there's a scale of energy that you know it has to be highly boosted. Well, basically he's going to see a Planckian frequency quanta, right? Usual yeah, Hawking so, quanta. Yeah, so he's highly boosted with respect to the outgoing photon. So I'm actually, I guess I'm not quite seeing the origin of that. Why well, you need that large boost? Oh, you, the reason you need a large boost is that black hole is like a black box. Yeah. Okay. It keeps producing things, and then it produces B. Yeah. At the moment it produces B, the earlier thing it produces has free flow to somewhere very far away. Sure. Okay. And the, ma the point of major B, you draw a pass like home. Yeah. I don't allow you to do anything to those things within that pass like yeah. So you're just saying you have to follow that light cone in, right? Almost, know. yeah, have that light cone. And, okay, you're saying how close you have to be to that light cone. That's right. That's what's next. Okay. Yeah. But why would you actually have to have a massive experimenter going? Couldn't you just send light itself? I mean, that goes at the speed of light and it isn't all that high energy. No, I'm not worried about the, the energy of, of this guy. I'm worried about that this guy is someone needs to go and interact with all these Hawking radiation. But those things in his rest frame has Planckian frequency. I don't know how to measure anything in my rest frame which has Planckian frequency. You saying is it just Planckian or or is it much larger than Planckian? It's well, some order one number, but it's just Planckian. It's just Planckian. There's no but second factor. Since the Hawking radiation is very dilute, the impact parameter between that guy and those those outgoing particles could be so large that it could be that he doesn't. It barely interact with anything. Right. That is you true. See the iconal, uh, yeah, but but then you're in trouble, right? Because this guy is supposed to carry some information in that big group to disagree with this result. If he doesn't carry any information in, it's not a paradox yet. This guy is forced to interact with those things somehow, so that he know this thing carries the information to purify B. If he fails to interact, he fails to complete the paradox. So you're somehow going to invoke some computational thing? I mean, no. I'm just saying. I've always said if even somebody else catches all those 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 outgoing particles, computes, gives that ingoing guy one bit, and and tells him go go measure. Yeah. Right? That's the next thing I will try to explain. That's related to putting into ADS phase. Okay. But before that, before anyone try to collect, right? Let's assume that. The first version is they are free-flowing Hawking radiation. I allow you to com complete your computation as long as you give me reasonable interaction with all of the things you need to, someone need to plug and compute. But that process, you need to face Hawking frequency, well, you need to face Planckian frequency of the quantum. Sorry, I didn't, did you answer Aaron's question about why should I consider this world line to be someone's rest frame as opposed to just laser signals sent in by external helpers? Uh, sorry, good question. So basically, the thing is that there is not one talking quanta, unlike in that, that uh, yeah. cartoon. There is an entire array of talking quanta lasting MQ. Yeah. So I have two choices. You can say, well, let me measure all of them in my rest frame, and I send in a signal. And that certainly this guy doing all the work doesn't have any frequency problem. But then it will be too late because this is a very long time. No, no, by the time this signal comes in, black will be gone. You just have M cubed friends that all communicate by light signals. You have M cubed friends. There's a whole bunch of guys with time like world lines and they all just transfer information to each other by light signals, for example. Well, I guess no the, the issue is the time they have to send that signal. They probably have to send a, a short wavelength signal. But so but you're just saying sure. if I modify this. Line I draw by a few of zigzags, right? Yeah. Then what you'll discover is that the, the time you, you have left in that every single segment, what is that? I suspect it has to be the same, but I haven't done that in exact zigzag calculation. Okay. So this is the thing that you have a flow of radiation in the restaurant of some guy is Planckian. There must be an invariant quantity that about the same starting point, end point of that trajectory that you cannot change. Okay. And I, I confess that the zigzag thing is not exactly I compute. It's really very funny well, stuff. Is, is this equivalent to saying, uh, I mean, the assumption you made is that the radiation gets to flow out. But once you do that, it seems like you're just saying any causal patch you pick 
either, either A or the radiation will be very close to the horizon of that causal patch. Yeah, so that's the other way to say it. Right, so you can, you can choose to, to do it very late in jumping, then, then the problem is that you fail to communicate with A. But, but that, that's not a thing I want to focus on, because usually people know about a large boost near the horizon. I want to focus on this one. If you start very far away from outside, and you have a deadline of how soon you need to come back to the black hole, you're potentially facing a large boost. So I should come to the next interesting question is, this is not a naive picture that I think Joe used. What people usually think is that, well, don't think about that such a long distance scale, right? I'm, I'm having trouble because I want to come in from very far away. But the black hole can still evaporate if I put it into ADS space, which is maybe much smaller than that M cube scale. Then all the Hawking radiation will essentially be confined to a small region, and it will be easier for that guy to come in because this is still M, doesn't change, but it's coming from a shorter distance. And however, when you put the radiation into a much smaller room, originally the free falling Hawking radiation is dilute in the sense that it's order one quantile per wavelength. Once you put them into a smaller region, that changes in the sense that in every wavelength there are more quanta. And, and that, in some sense, if you do the same calculation, ask about how much smaller the boost become they'll be exactly be compensated by how much more quanta you need to deal with at a given amount of time. So that happens to be geometrically canceled each other in this case. So it doesn't help when you put the black hole into a smaller box, let it evaporate. Someone who's starting from the edge of the box, trying to come into within this time scale, will witness the similar problem. What if you do these mining operations, which I, I don't really know much about, but people talk about it? I, I am not. Mining is usually about these two guys, right? So I'm not sure how right. that helps the... I thought you could just get the, all of the Hawking stuff out. Ah, yeah. good. You're saying, what if you accelerate evaporation yeah. through mining so yeah. that, but they don't change this, they give you a non-M dependent factor on the evaporation time. So it's still order M cube, or... No, no, it's not, but it doesn't actually solve your problem. You can get it to M squared. Oh, you, mean you, can you can make it M squared, but you're, you're, that doesn't really fix up everything you're saying. I mean, M squared, but then you have the same, it's like packing into a smaller box. No, M, M squared is still pretty big. M squared over is much bigger than M. If it's M squared, but you don't need to stack up quanta per box, then I don't have this problem. But I guess you still need to stack up quanta. Right? Because effectively, you make it evaporate faster means they flow to only m squared distance, but it is the same number of quanta that needs to come out. So you have the same, it's the same thing that's put into a smaller box and have more quanta per wavelength. Why is more quanta harder? Are you saying including processing time or something? Well, so my, my, my the actual numerical comes out, not numerical, the calculation comes out is that if you do that the usual way, you get to process one Planckian quanta per one Planckian time. If you put in a smaller box, you get to say the wavelength of quanta is, say, Planckian uh, times 100, 100 times Planckian, but then you need to deal with 10,000 quanta at, the, at the given, any given time, so square. So I'll say, and uh, in some sense that is, if you imagine the standard of how many quanta you put into a region will form a black hole, that's the same standard. So one Planckian quanta is problematic because you think that much energy in one Planckian distance is actually a Planckian black. And you can ask if you have a longer wavelength quanta, how many of them you stack up in the same wavelength forms a black hole? That's the same answer. This is saying uh, how many, whether they form a black hole in the, as measured with their energy in the reference frame of that guy who comes in? And yes. And which actually they so in using his energy using his problem. energy yes using his own evaluation as well this should have been a black well, we should let you finish so since we have this colloquium yes but I'm I think all the questions are pointing to a nice direction so they actually guide me through almost the, the final points so I'll just try to say if you believe this is standard we should apply. Then I can answer Joe's question that he as it pointed to lead to a town. And I think he would be happy with every answer and, and say if this is the standard, there is no serious paradox. But let me try. 
Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you might disagree. Okay? So let me draw a diagram where I care about very long distance scale. So this is my black hole. Black hole is essentially one point. Okay? So it's a word map. And this is where it has been totally evaporated. Let's say you want to test unitarity. In a sense, the real asymptotic unitarity. What you should do is that right, this, is, this is C, this is B. You go somewhere very far away, like here. Okay? And you do your check. And you'll see, indeed, B and C are entangled with each other. C purifies B. And this is fine because whatever you do here never affects that black hole, which you know is asymmetric in the Heidi bars. However, this doesn't form a par paradox because anyone who finished this, this check doesn't have a chance to jump back into the black hole and take CA anymore. So if you think you can do exactly the same experiment by taking the same paradox, and while well, taking into account that these radiation propagates freely, and try to do that here. That's a reasonable guess. I know how C changes its trivial propagation. You put in exactly the same experiment. It's called experiment one. It's the, it's the confirmation of the BC entanglement. You perform exactly the same experiment here. It will fail. It will tell you that BC is not entangled. Well, here BC is entangled. Right. C means, basically C means some outcome you design at the end of this point, and you compare that with B. If you do that here, you'll see that they are entangled, if you have perfect knowledge about a black hole metric. If you do it there, it won't, because during the process, you've been affecting what the black hole does. This is a black box. You don't know how they send out information, and you've been affecting it. So there's no guarantee that this B is the same B as if you didn't check, do anything to the black hole. And in fact, not only that B, a large portion of the early radiation, the later portion of that, is also being affected by what you did already. Right. So there's no reason that if you do it this way, they should be entangled. Therefore, this guy can happily jump into the black hole. Maybe I should have extended the line longer. And check that B and A it purifies each other. There's no drama in the horizon. And there's nothing for you to form a paradox, because this first check has failed. And first track failing doesn't violate unitarity because you know why that fails. It's, not, it's nothing wrong about unitarity. It's something that you change the state of black hole. And, and along this line, you can imagine if someone claimed that I know more than just the naive black hole uh, unitary metric, uh, S metric. I know how everything that I do affects the black hole. I, I, I take all that back into account. I can design something called an experiment two, okay, which enforces this. I want the outcome of my experiment two, <coughs> C and B, indeed purify each other. Assume you have the power to do that. Then you will break this. Then you see a firewall. In that particular mode, you try to enforce this outcome. But that is then not surprising, because you did something deliberately to affect the black hole in a purely causal way to achieve that. Right. So, so uh, some solutions that Joe written down earlier try to achieve this through additional structure, like EI equal to EPR. Uh, EI equal to EPR, in my point of view, is just enforcing this. Whatever you do outside affects inside, makes a firewall, so what? But their problem is that if you do that here, their theory is forced to tell you that something will be functional here, too. Right. But if you follow my very culture standard, you don't need that. Do check unitarity outside. It's the usual standard theory. When you do unitary check inside, you have to consider how it affects the black hole. And my conjecture is that there are two ways to do that. One is that this check fails, or this check makes the firewall, which is not surprising. So the, the, the way it affects it is just through ordinary ordinary physical processes, radiation, and things that you can keep track of? You can try to keep track of. So if the effect is due to your inability to, isol to insulate your, your, your yes. propagation? Yes. So, you can, so people will try. I think many people have already tried to say, well, what if I guarantee you that there is no signal coming to? What happens? Or argue that if I there is something coming through, but it is 
independent of what I do next and generate this stuff, what happens? Those I'm trying to suppress into three, but I can talk a little bit about that if you want to hear about. But I guess if you want to hear about that before that, any other questions for the easier part of this story? Well, I guess I would just say that the cleanest examples of these paradoxes are always with large black holes in anti de Sitter space, where the anti de Sitter space is not big enough where it would evaporate on its own. Does this kind of point of view have anything to say about that case? Well, then I will have to say, so in that case, you still want it to evaporate, right? You just evaporate through the boundary and yeah, coupling but, but to there, stuff. there, you know, at least in the ADS-CFT framework, we have precise control over, in principle, turning on couplings on the boundary and turning them off completely. So we can answer these questions about isolation and segregation extremely cleanly. That's the thing I will try to talk about more to you guys, including Douglas, about what exactly that's being done. Because the most, I will say, from, from the first guys, the most suspicious part is this assumption that the dialing coupling constant. Is that I, I will, we should discuss this in the framework that there is no classical field that you are allowed to tune during this process. Every coupling, if it's changeable, is a field. In principle, a coupling to that allows the system to send information into this the subsystem that is covering that field value. And I'm not sure how to how to address that directly yet. Because it's not like you have a coupling system, you can just turn off, turn on, the information just flow, and you are usually you are only the, the bystand, you're only the observer or outside people. Information never comes to you, although you have the ability to control how information flow in the rest of the system. That sounds difficult to be true to me, but I don't know how to do it. The usual rules of quantum field theory, we allow ourselves to turn off couplings ex completely. And like well, but I think that when you do that, when you mean usual, the many early application is not talking about the involved quantum information when you do that. Well, as you say, we can discuss this later, but I, I think was an issue. What if I do something that looks kind of like I was doing experiment two in that maybe there was some stray radiation that fell into the black hole? If I didn't really do experiment two, then is the idea that I would form a firewall in that mode? Or? If you didn't do experiment two, experiment two is something designed to enforce this. So if you do something that is short of experiment two, I will say that this just failed. <coughs> right? but never mind whether it failed or succeeded. Does that type of thing create, are you saying that by doing experiments outside the black hole, I can create firewalls? By doing experiments outside of black hole, you can change the information contained in the later part of radiation which change can be mild in the sense that it doesn't create a firewall. But if you enforce that to be this one, then the change cannot be mild. It must create a firewall in a certain in a few modes. And, and again, you're claiming that that effect making the firewall as you enter the Joe is something that you could trace through normal physical processes. If you know how information is sent out from this black box. Yes. So something that might be relevant to this is that the fact that Anytime we talk about throwing anything into a black hole, even something that weighs just the Planck mass, the, the system, once that thing has gotten within whatever you want to consider the stretched horizon of the black hole, the system now has enormously larger entropy because you've changed the mass. If you change the mass by order of the Planck mass, you change the entropy by order m. So it seems to me that claiming that the you can understand the states of the system after that's happened in terms of the states that were there before that happened, especially when we're talking about you know, the quantum information contained in one bit. I, that seems to me to be a big loophole in some of these arguments. And that, in, again, it's, please excuse me for talking about our model, but that's a crucial part of how things work in our model that the new Hilbert space that's formed when something falls in is larger than the original one that you associated with the black hole. And, and so it's, it's really impossible to do this experiment too, I think. I mean, I think the experiment, the experiment we're, 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 I mean, we discuss sort of this in our paper in the sense that we're meeting the mode before the scrambling time, before the growth in, this, in the size of the Hilbert space really, really affects the properties of the outgoing modes. That's an effect which, as we know from chaos, turns on exponentially. 
but if you if you meet the mode before the scrambling time, your model, as I said, has to describe what we do see on the horizon, which is this long period of time where the excitation that you threw in seems not to have been affected. Okay. And, and, and I claim if you do that explicitly in a quantum mechanical model and try to keep track of the states, the only way to do that is to say that there's some subsystem of what you now consider the black hole which remains non-interacting with the rest for that long period. Well, one simpler question you can ask is how, how much do you affect the black hole by building the detector that can measure that AB uh, is in fact uh, in the vacuum state? I discussed this with Dan, and uh, it's, I think the answer is that uh, you only need to build it out of quantum field theory quanta that are slightly more energetic than the Hawking uh, quanta in order to detect that over some order unity fraction of the black hole horizon that there are not high energy radiation. So that generally raises the uh, black hole entropy only by order unity number of qubits which is uh, much smaller than the uh, amount of entropy in the, the, the modes that saying are not in a firewall. So I guess I can say one thing. I, yeah, I think at least you'll yeah, have we should start. wrap up in, uh, in a few, say, a couple more minutes. Uh, OK. So, so one. Only one more thing, and something that's supposed to be hidden there, is I guess in response to, to Aaron's remark, is that uh, I agree that you can try to build this stuff with some low energy thing that doesn't, by the existence of that, does not strongly affect the black. But what you need more from that is not only its existence, right? You need its ability to interact with the Hawking radiation and get information from that. So I'll give you a toy model of that, which is that Hawking radiation is modeled by dilute radiation. You can say maybe photons. Then there will be operator A of a black hole tells you what is the vector potential of that radiation coming from a black hole. Okay, let's picture that. You want to know what is the EM wave coming out of a black hole. There is an operator acting on this particular state. I don't know how to define. It gives you the answer. And what you need is that your Hamiltonian of this guy actually will involve A from the black hole, an inner product with J of your detector. This is how you interact at, at the perturbative level. And you need that interaction because this is the only operator which hits this, is about a black hole state, and also hits the detector state, which entangles them. This, this thing exists in your Hamiltonian is the only reason that your detector gets any information from the radiation. Okay? We agree on that. Okay. But these operators A and J, they they are they have the classical counterpart, and their classical thing basically obeys this kind of equation, right? <coughs> A is coming from some source J. When you are very far away outside and you see black hole give you some radiation, you can through this equation define there is some effective current which black hole is having. There is, if you don't go to the detail of the 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 geometry, treat as a black box. You'll say, I get radiation because there's a black box with some time-dependent uh, current which is radiating. And, and you apply the inverse logic to the detector. If it has a non-trivial J, it must also source some radiation. And it can be very weak. You assume it's very weak. It doesn't matter. It will have that. <laughs> right? And this is an operator that allows black hole to get information from whatever radiation field generated by the detector. If you arrange the space-time setup this way, this will be zero because by the time that this comes back in, there is no black hole. But if you do that very close, then basically they are constantly in the influence of each other. When this is non-zero, this is also non-zero. And you can see, if you Say, I want to tune down this possible back reaction, tune down how you affect the black hole information, by naively saying I build a detector with smaller current. At the same time, you are reducing your ability to get information from that. 
So there is no naive tuning to say no back reaction, yet you get information. But this is, of course, only at a perturbative level. At non-perturbative level, this can be become a very large phase in your, in your wave function. Then maybe you can get <coughs> this to have an effect that not, but that's complicated. If I treat it perturbatively, saying very small amount of this, give me information, then exactly the same amount, give black hole sign information. And that's why that motivated me to conjecture this. If you want enough information to enforce something about one quanta, you give black hole amount of information to modify one quanta too. Okay. So, that was the next thing.